Let's look at the last manager. What happened to him? The one who received the one talent came up and said, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow, gathering where you scattered no seed. I was afraid, went away, hid your talent. See, you have what is yours. Look at what the master said about him. The master said, you wicked. He called him wicked, lazy slave. You knew that I reaped where I did not sow, gather where I scattered no seed. Then you ought to have put my money in the bank. And upon my arrival, I would have received money back with interest. Therefore, take away the talent from him. Give it to the one who has the ten talents. You notice the consequences? Even what he has is taken away. What are the consequences? What are the regrets? To be called by the master, wicked, lazy, slave. Wow, that's painful. And then to lose what has been given to you. Take it away. Notice this is the law of life. To everyone who has, more shall be given. He will have an abundance. But from the one who does not have, even what he does have shall be taken away. What is Jesus saying? Jesus is simply saying, if you apply, if you practice, if you obey me, the more you will have. For example, like in any sports, if you practice, you get better. But if you are lazy, you don't practice, even your skills, you will lose it. Even in corporate world, if you don't do your job properly, even your position will be taken away from you. The third manager, the third slave, was not rewarded. In fact, it's a life of eternal regrets. Why do I say regret? Look at what the Bible is saying. Throw out the worthless slave into the outer darkness. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The master described the third manager as worthless slave. You know why? This slave did not even do anything for the master. What the master has entrusted to him, what did he do? Look at me. Nothing. He did not steal it. He did not gamble it away. What did he do? Nothing. By simply doing nothing, what does it mean? Why is he described as wicked, lazy, and worthless? Can I tell you why? He does not care about the interest of the master. He is his own boss. He only cared about himself. And that to me are the evidences of somebody who really do not know their master. This is a picture of many church people today. They think they are Christians. But you ask me, the third manager does not know the Lord. Why? Look at how he described the Lord. He said, unfair, unkind, harsh, hard. This man does not know the Lord. In verse 30, the consequences get worse. Throw out the worthless slave into the outer darkness. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. People have often asked me, what is the meaning of that last sentence? Throw away the worthless slave. Do you notice? Worthless. Good for nothing. Friends, how will you know if you are a true follower of Jesus or not? I want to ask you, are you serving the King of Kings? Do you consider the Lord as your master? Do you know him as your Lord? Notice in this story, the master said, this slave is worthless not doing anything. Throw him into the outer darkness. What is the outer darkness? People have often asked me, in that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Isn't that a description of regret? You weep 
and you gnash your teeth. This is to me deep, deep regret. This term is used three times after darkness in the Bible. And the term weeping and gnashing of teeth is used seven times in the New Testament. And it's all about something that you don't want to be in. It's bad news. Wherever that place is, I don't want to be there. Some people say this is hell. Some people say this is a dark place reserved for those who are not faithful. Whatever it is, as of today, I want to tell you something. I don't want to be there. And that's the meaning of avoiding the ultimate regret. The regret that there is no other solution. How do you avoid having the same tragedy, same regrets as the third slave? May I suggest, may I remind you what I've shared with you before. To avoid this, so that you won't be like the third slave, the third master, you must remember your role. Be devoted. You must serve the master with devotion. So remember the word devotion. Don't just serve out of duty, out of love. Everything must flow out of love. Devotion. Love him. Because our master loves us. He's a good master. Next, when it comes to responsibility, what must you do? You must be intentional. It is incumbent upon you to live a life of intentionality. Find out, really, what the master wants. Study his word. Listen to him. Be intentional, not accidental. When it comes to reckoning, what must you do? You must live a life of self-examination. Examine your life day by day. Don't wait for the day of judgment to be examined. Today, learn to examine your own life. As somebody once said, the unexamined life is not worth living. Ask the Lord to examine your life. Are you living in a way that's pleasing to Him? What must you do to be faithful to the end, to avoid the destiny of the third manager? You must depend on the Lord, depend on the Holy Spirit. Without the Lord, without dependence on the Holy Spirit, you have no power to do what God wants us to do, what God wants you to do. So live a very dependent life. When you depend on the Holy Spirit, God gives you supernatural power. If your life is dependent on the Lord, if you are dependent on the Holy Spirit, your mindset will be radically different. What do I mean? You will learn to ask the right question. This is one question that will transform your life. What do I mean? For most of us, we ask the wrong question. We ask, what will I do with my time? What will I do with my possession? Now that I'm so blessed, that is the wrong question. For others, they ask, what will I do with what God has blessed me with? That question is not good enough. The right question, Lord, what do you want me to do with what you have entrusted to me? That is the right question. You ask the owner, Lord, what do you want me to do with what you have entrusted to me? Not even what you have given me, what you have entrusted to me. That, my friend, is something that if you learn to regularly have this spirit-filled mindset, when you want to buy a pair of shoes, when you want to buy bags, when you want to buy a shirt, you ask the Lord, Lord, is this what you want me to do? Is this a pair of shoes you want me to get? If you have free time, do you say, Lord, what do you want me to do with your time that you have given me? It's no longer my time. It is His time. It's a very Christ-centered life. When you want to raise your children, can you honestly say now, Lord, what do you want me to do with the children you have entrusted to me? 
no longer my children, God's children. All your loved ones belong to the Lord. Remember I told you, be devoted to the Lord, be intentional, examine your life, be dependent on the Lord Holy Spirit. That's the acronym for the word DIED. Until you have died to your life. As Paul said in Galatians 2.20, I've been crucified with Christ. No longer I who live. Until you have died to yourself, you will not be able to live a life of no regret. To die to yourself is to live a life of no regret provided you live for Jesus. As we close, let me share with you what happened last Wednesday. I, I requested the permission of Henry C. Jr. to share this with you. You see, last Wednesday, we were together in the hospital. And I heard Henry sharing with me how this year and last year was the best year of their lives with John. He narrated how John and the family became so close, how John lived a life that is so spirit-filled, it was the peak of her spiritual life. And then Henry told me, no regret, because for him, John has lived her life to the full. And the relationship, no regrets, the best of terms. When we had a meeting with all the specialists, with the doctors, I remember that night in the conference room, you have the different doctors. And Mr. Henry C. shared this. He said, I know for a fact, should the Lord take my daughter home, it's okay because she will be in a better place. She will be in heaven. And I look at the faces of the doctors. They were shocked. They were so inspired. Because here's a man who understood how to live a life of no regret. You see, once you know God owns everything and you live daily based on His will, you learn to hold on to things loosely. You don't try to grab. You surrender everything. Kindly allow me to read the text of Big Boy C. I am sure this was said with a lot of pain, with a lot of tears, but this is from his heart. Our dearest daughter, Jan C., is now with the Lord Jesus Christ already. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. This is an amazing testimony. I praise God for big boys and wavering faith. Let's continue to pray for him and the family and princess. May God continue to strengthen them. And I praise God for our brother. He honestly can honestly say, one day I will surely see John again because John is in a much better place. To God be the glory. So, what about you today? Will you live a life of regret? Or are you going to be willing to prepare right now, starting today? As you move forward, live a life of no regret. Live one day at a time. Give your best to the Lord. If you're with your loved ones, love them. Remember the principle. God owns everything. And we are his manager. Let's be faithful to our master.